Okay, so let's jump right into whatever. Uh, look at my notes here. What do we have? Disney. I want to go off on Disney. You know, Disney has a stranglehold on the minds of the West. It, it, it's it. Disney's stranglehold on Western minds and Western ideology, specifically, you know, the working class masses, it's one of the greatest propaganda tools, It's if not the best, that the Illuminati have. You know, let's just, I'm not going to, you know, sugarcoat it. You know, Walt, because it starts at such a young age, it's it's child propaganda. That's why it's so much more nefarious and blatant. And at the same time, people are more in denial about it, Yeah, which is, I mean, that just kind of shows the mental illness. When something is that blatant and people still fight it. Um... But, you know, Disney, Walt Disney, the evil piece of crap that started it, started this animation studio. You know, he's a he's a fraud. You know, he wasn't really a cartoonist. Or at least he wasn't um, talented in any way. He lived off the talent of others. But he grew up in, in the Demole Brotherhood, which is basically... Freemasonry for children, for young boys, young white boys. And what is de Molay? I mean, what is Freemasonry? Freemasonry is basically a recruitment tool f- for the Illuminati, but specifically for the working class mm, patriarchs uh middle cl- middle class patriarchs but it's it's kind of devolved into working class patriarchs but originally it was a tool for the illuminati to bring in middle class um yeah middle class kind of petite bourgeois as they say there were guys who didn't really have any allegiance to the working class but had tons of influence over the working class and at the same time sought um, capitalist favor. You know, these were the the social climbers, you know. They were specifically, you know, pulled from institutions of business, um, social engineering, like, not, 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 not social engineering, what do I mean? Um, 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 but, you know, architecture, infrastructure, and of course, uh, academic institutions and eventually the media and Hollywood TV um, anything any dominant part of Western culture that has any kind of influence the Illuminati want to get control of so obviously you create a fraternity all these guys want to join they don't really know what it's for and what 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 do they learn? They don't actually become, you know, inside players in the Illuminati in any way. What they're taught is basically a sugar-coated version of the New World Order agenda. And they're given a kind of middling um, occult esoteric teachings largely stolen from Muslim um, Muslim what, what's, what's the right word here because it's not Gnosticism uh, a lot of Freemasonry Freemasonic knowledge is from Christian and Judaic Gnosticism uh, you know spiritual teachings that basically uh they're, they 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 spring from 
you know, Abrahamic text, but typically Gnosticism is associated mostly with uh, Luciferian doctrine of man as God. So it really kind of contradicts Orthodox Judaism, Judeo-Christianity. Um, hold on a second. There's a big giant caterpillar in here. I want to help him out. So, the Freemasonry, yeah, there's, that's why there's so many different levels of Freemasonry. First, you learn kind of Christian Gnosticism, and, you know, then kind of like Muslim. Uh, I, don't, I, don't I don't really remember the order. I've watched documentaries, read, you know, old conspiracy theory and actual Freemasonry kind of websites. Um, I, don't, I don't know the exact order, but first you learn before it builds up. At some point, I think in the middle of it, because there's actually two, there's, what is it, Scottish Rite and, and uh, oh God, what's the other one? It doesn't matter, you can look it up. But a lot of the knowledge they teach you is just kind of Christian folklore, basically. Like the deleted, things that were deleted from the Bible, things that were deleted from the Torah. Because, um, I mean, they're totally corrupted books. I mean, that's the... That's the foundational belief of Islam, is that these are totally edited, corrupted, holy books that, you know, the prophets themselves, Christian and Jewish prophets, were inspired by God, were um, teaching God's morality and putting it into, you know, words. But it's been so corrupted that, of course, the Quran had to come and basically... Um, clear, clarify, and also, um, you know, complete all of these prophetic teachings. Now, Freemasonry subverts all of that. It's basically like, tells you all the stuff that was deleted, but as you go up the, the ranks, these 33 degrees, and there's probably more degrees beyond that, but those degrees teach you why things were deleted. Um, you learn the true story of Jesus. You learn he was killed. Why? Um, what was added from other religions? All, stuff that's kind of leaked out over the years. It's not too shocking. You know, a lot of the stuff, the Freemasonry, it's just sort of like, it just kind of confirms everything a logical, sane person would guesstimate. Um, but a ton of it is actually, the stuff that's actually useful is, you know, some kind of stuff from, like, the Kabbalah. Some kind of Jewish shit, some Christian shit is actually kind of worth it. But a lot of Freemasonry, and this is just, it's just something I really want to get across, is just stolen from Islam. Because Freemasonry has been around a long time, but, but what we know of as modern Freemasonry is really Gnosticism taught during the Crusades. The, the European bloodlines of the ruling elite, the satanic elite, they, they wanted, they were the same way they were, the Illuminati recruit people now, there are, people are recruited into the Illuminati now through, you know, various um, institutions. In the Middle Ages, Freemasonry was how you could bring soldiers into uh, uh, the, the Illuminati um, under, you know, it, it's, it's not specifically branched off from the, the, what are those guys called during the Crusades? Those fools. Um, oh God, what are they called? You know, everyone knows them. the Knights Templar. 
the Knights Templar are basically like the, the proto Illuminati. You know, they fought for Christianity, killing tons of Jews, killing tons of Muslims, turning Europe Christian. They were not, they didn't believe, they didn't have the Christian faith. The, they knew what they were doing was basically serving a satanic elite. They were Luciferians, basically. Luciferianism is how the, the Satanists coerced a lot of these lower Christians into, and Jews, oh, especially the Jews, into uh, accepting their satanic uh, New World Order agenda. Basically, like, telling them, like, oh, Islam is the real threat. Islam is the, the worst thing that there is. It's even though Islam is really just the, the graduate version of Judeo-Christianity. It's just the purest form of that faith and tradition teachings. But they had to teach, because, you know, Islam was so dominant. It was really the, the, the biggest progressive, um, not just theology, but just uh, philosophy, all-encompassing philosophy of the Middle Ages. It was taking off and so quickly and enlightening so many different cultures because it's like a it's such a it is the original multiculturalism it is this monoculture that kind of absorbs other cultures without erasing them it just kind of enlightens them i mean you see you know all these asian and african and even european cultures that turned muslim they didn't really change you know they they actually Islam itself kind of uh, adopted all of these things. It's like a big melting pot as a um, community, as a, you know, has these foundational Quranic, I guess you could argue Arabian origins. Not really, because Muhammad didn't really keep anything from the previous uh, Arab paganism. I mean, his whole thing was fighting Arab paganism. He really rejected his own culture in a big way because it was a totally corrupt, you know, kind of savage, nomad culture. And in fact, Islam actually brought tons of cultural and racial pride to the Arabs, which they just spread to other people. They didn't spread their culture. That's a big total fabrication that Islamophobes use. Like, oh, the Arabs push their culture on all these different people. No, they didn't. If, in fact, they, they, they pushed um, Islam. They didn't even really push. Most of the time, these kingdoms uh, agreed because it helped them. Um, one, you know, it, it brought peace between, they didn't want war, but it also was just, um, it was fruitful because the Arabs controlled the 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 trade and and and, and slavery and, and and all of these different uh, merchant uh, markets, so tons of people just embraced Islam very easily. I mean, it's just and it, it it helped their cultures tremendously. But but the the main point is that you know Islam innovated all these things, innovated um, mass producing paper. Uh, raising literacy, uh, increasing just you know wellness and length of life, uh, the sciences, mathematics, all these different things. Um, the Europeans, the only way to really uh, Europeans, their whole mission, not and it really Europeans didn't really give a shit. It was the European elite, the satanic royal bloodlines. They specifically. Um, out of Italy and Britain and the British royal family are really Germans, but we'll go into that later. Um, so yeah, Islam's taken off. We have to stop this. So we're going to like basically steal, not st steal, so much of the European Renaissance and the Enlightenment eras are totally just plagiarizing Islamic teachings because, you know, Islam the, or the, the Muslim world, they were almost like a new Tower of Babel. They, they were, because they were, they, the main things that these, I can't remember which caliph did, they translated tons and tons of 
of, of, of the, the, the books and teachings of these uh, cultures that they absorbed. So for the first time you had culture, a culture, you know, countries and cultures and peoples who were learning from all over. And the, the, they were learning the knowledge from people all over. You know, um, that's how Muslims became so successful and advanced so quickly. You know, you're getting Eastern, African, European, Middle Eastern knowledge and being taught in the, you know, they, these are like some of the first universities. You know, Europeans sent their people to the Middle East to become scholars. And then they went back to Europe and taught all this stuff. And that kind of leads into Freemasonry, Knights Templar. Knights Templar learned so many things from fighting Muslims. They adopted a lot of their, you know, their knowledge, and not just from them, but also, you know, what from what the Muslims learned from Indian, you know, India. Can't you can't uh, discount that? I mean, so much. There's there's a reason Islam has such a kind of Buddhist. There's there's there's, there's I don't know how do I want to phrase it. A lot of what because I you know you know Islam followed Buddhism in a way. I'm sure a ton of that, and I mean it is it is it has its its very lots of very valid uh, spiritual teachings, which I'm sure God put into the Quran. I mean they, it's it's, uh, but I mean it also Buddhism is very very limited and corrupt. It's we'll go into that another time. But yes, the. So, you know, all these Luciferian Christian Gnostics and the Knights Templar and Freemasonry, they they took so much from Islam. There's there's so many different degrees and sects of Freemasonry that use Muslim icon iconography. I mean, you look at those stupid uh, Shriners. They wear the little Turkish um, fezes um, from the Ottoman Empire. I mean, just so much. Even like they use the same little swords. That's like a a crest in a lot of free free basin sex. So basically, Freemasonry is just sort of like it's just like plagiarizing and stealing all of this kind of monotheistic knowledge and saying like proclaiming that they kind of you know. Like, oh, yes, like, oh, the Muslims, they have their place, and the Jews and the Christians have their place, but they're actually, you know, kind of just these silly, primitive, uh, um, you know, uh, superstitious beliefs. The, the, the real God is, God itself is actually an illusion. The, the, the real God is man. Man, there is no uh, creator of the universe. It is, the universe has just always been here, and it's, it's the Luciferian energy within all of us we are all um possessed with we all share this 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 animal this you know this spiritual animal uh lucifer or you know they call him they use baphomet instead because you know it would freak out all of these christians if they you know were told lucifer is god so but but basically they're you know luciferians they're luciferians that's what Freemasonry really, really teaches you. And they're Luciferian Satanists, to be more specific. Because, at the, you know, the very top you learn, uh, you know, Lucifer is basically... And, and this is actually kind of true. This is the pagan roots of Lucifer and Satan. Um, goes to the kind of Roman, pagan, Greco-Roman pagan traditions you know saturn is their god and of course that's related to lots of other pagan gods like set from the egyptians which is very important but you know saturn is the 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 patriarchal god of greco-roman paganism and who is you know his his son zeus or jupiter or lucifer you know so when you think about the, you know, these Saturnist or Satanists, their descendants who rule today, these Saturnists, they were the slave masters of the Jews. And the Jews, their Messiah, 
who's who's going to rescue them from these saturn worshiping um oppressors these oppressors it was going to be jupiter or lucifer and then you see that what what remains it's been edited out a lot of uh or, or, or was it injected? I'm not quite sure. We won't. We, we don't really know. But you see references to Lucifer throughout uh, the Old Testament and Torah, and, and more so in um, what's that stupid fucking thing they added? The later Jewish text. The oh god, it's so evil and awful. I forget what it's called. It's the second. It's like it's you know their second book, the one that has all of the really insane claims from it's you know all the post jesus uh rabbis oh i can't think of it right now talmud the talmud lots of references to you know lucifer and you know satan's not that bad and all this stuff because okay originally the the original jews yes the the hebrews and on you know from the from the hebrew tribes of judea all the way down to you know kind of like the, the the Roman Jews. That's all pure. That's all pure Judaism. Yes, Lucifer, or, you know, they were waiting on a, a, a Messiah to free them and bring them back to Israel so they could be the chosen people and rule the world and lead us all into a better, you know, world. Uh, until their covenant, they broke the covenant with God. That's a big part of the Old Testament that is strangely kind of ignored by Christian Zionists who are under control of Satanist and Zionist Jews. God broke his covenant with the Jews. They are no longer his chosen people. He, he called on Jesus to be the light and, and, and teach the, the tenets of Judaism to everyone. And so, yes, Jesus claimed to be the Jew, the Jewish Messiah, which is, you know, they called Lucifer. Um, but at the same time, if, if you know, if he was a, a truly good prophet and this enlightened person, he was not, he, there, there's one, there's no actual reference in the gospel, gospel that he cl called himself God. That was added later by satanic vatican to add paganism like oh no god is actually this trinity and he's he's a man and he's god and he's also you that's pretty insane <laughs> but it's paganism they christianity is total paganism but christ himself um you know he just taught he was the 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 jewish messiah the king of jews that's what we call him uh, so yeah well, i guess we could call him the 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 Luciferian, uh, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever kind of bullshit the occult and all these people believe of Lucifer. But the thing is, the, Satan, Jewish, Jews after, you know, to be a Jew, you have to claim Jesus was not the Jewish Messiah. And you have to claim that the Lucifer, the Jewish Messiah, the Moshiach has not come yet. And when he does come, he will uh, make the Jews the chosen people and they will rule from Israel and they will rule all of us and we are cattle to them. This is from the Talmud. This is not from, you know, actual Orthodox. You know, of course, Orthodox Jews today are the Talmud believing crazy Zionists. But like a, a true Orthodox Jew would only believe the Torah and not the Talmud. They would reject the Talmud and they would actually follow Christ. That's the that's the the. the the funny thing about it or but at the very least they would reject the talmud and reject zionism and reject all this nonsense they're waiting for lucifer their mashiach to come and help them or whatever Just, so they you know let them rule the world to be the chosen people um but lucifer the people, the Jews, the Zionist Jews, the these Illuminati Jews, I'll just call them the Illuminati Jews, and I'll call them Illuminati Christians, and these, the Illuminati and all these Satanists, the Satanists have convinced these people that, you know, the Jewish Messiah will come and he will make Lucifer the god of humanity, 
and they don't realize all of these people, all the Jews that go along with it, and Christian Zionists, they don't realize that Jupiter to these people, these upper echelons, is just the son of Satan, because yes, Jews believed that uh, Lucifer was just a prophet, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a Messiah sent by God. But since these Satanists don't believe in God, they think, no, uh, Lucifer is just, um, a, he's, he's, it's, it's a means to make Satan, you know, it's, it's, it, it's Satan's messenger, you know, the pagan God. I mean, that's the difference between uh, uh, Allah and Satan is, say, Allah is the monotheist God. He's the only God. There's all these pagan deities are really, you know, angels and demons that humans have foolishly uh, given equal footing, equal spiritual um, reverence to. I hope all this makes sense. I'll reiterate, just kind of clarify, because I'm just going off the top of my head here. But what I mean is, to Satanist, Lucifer is... Well, let's, let's, let's get really... Yeah, to them, it's just the son of Satan. Lucifer is the son of Satan. The Jewish Messiah will be the son of Satan, and he will uh, help Satan rule the world again. That's why... That's basically... You know, what's put into um, movies like, what was it, The Omen? Yeah, that's The Omen very correctly nailed it. But to, what, 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 who is Lucifer really? You know, when you, when you look at all of this, everything that's been written, Christian Gnostics, they, they, they went over this question, Jewish Gnostics went over this question, and a lot of that was studied by Muslim scholars to kind of elaborate on what the Quran teaches. You know, the Quran teaches that Satan is just like this deceiving angel. Um, it doesn't really mention Lucifer. Because, um, you know, some people, some sects conflate Lucifer and Satan as one. These would be, you know, the Luciferian Satanists. And others see them as totally different people or entities. To me personally, I think Lucifer is the angel that fell, became Satan, and when time is over, uh, Satan will, um, you know, come back to uh, heaven. And I guess become Lucifer again. Um, I mean, that's what Satanist, a Luciferian Satanist, believe. But they believe he will return and usurp God, and he will become Satan. Will become God. Lucifer will become God. Um, that is not. We as Muslims reject that. Um, it makes way more sense that you know it's more cohesive with the original. Jewish stories that Lucifer is actually yes Lucifer was a uh, an angel who fell but he's not yes he is bitter at humanity and he you know tempts them and destroys them but he does it for God he's just a he's just a, a kind of darker angel he's a, a uh, he's just doing the, the the concept that that Satan is some sort of um, rival of God that is blasphemous in itself, and it's just like why would the idea that Satan is this kind of enemy? I mean, yes, the the the, the word Satan means enemy, but the idea that Satan is some sort of um, you know like you have to choose Satan or God. Uh, you know the Satanists they choose Satan because they think that he's some sort of equal they're they're hedging their bets they're just like well I'm gonna side with Satan because he's ruling the he's got the world on lock uh, I mean that's that that is the trick Satan is a liar he's a trickster he's he's the angel he's the trickster angel he plays this evil bad guy to see what kind of like 
selfish fools will follow. And that's a lot of fucking people. <laughs> Pretty much everyone in the West. You know, even if you're a Christian or a Jew, you're really following Satan. Because those are totally corrupted, idiotic religions when you really look at it. Like, they're so... They're so... There's no, you know, there's no... There's no internal logic to any of them. They contradict themselves. I mean, if you're a Christian, you have to believe the Jewish teachings of, um, what is it? I can't even, I can't remember, but it's just like, a Christian has to believe like eye for an eye and, uh, you know, to turn the other cheek. It's just so ridiculous. Like, there's just, ugh. I mean, that's why you, you get, I don't want to insult him, but someone like a Martin Luther King, like the, there's no cohesive faith or there's no morality to any of it. And this is a great little tangent I can go on. And, you know, Judaism brought, it was a great progressive religion at one time. It brought Ten Commandments to the masses <laughs> of the Middle East, you know, ten fucking commandments that are just kind of common sense kind of golden rule things but that was big but just 10 commandments that's it god just wants you to follow 10 simple rules it's idiotic now but i mean it's it's basic you know judaism is like elementary spiritual teaching it's elementary morality christianity adds the gospel so like follow the examples of Christ. So you get maybe, I don't know, 20, 30, maybe 50 more little suggestions. They're not even really commandments, but like, you know, be Christ-like. He, he was definitely way more moral than just 10 little rules because he, you know, kind of studied all of this uh, advanced um, teaching because the Talmud actually, it predates Christ and follows Christ. There was There were tons of rabbinic teachings that you know any kind of rabbi would have learned and of course jesus just taught that to non-jews you know he just wanted he's just like why can't everyone learn this stuff why do you have to be born into it <laughs> thank you jesus great man um they killed you for it <laughs> um or at least they persecuted him for it we don't know if he was killed um it made a great story that he was martyred and it tricked a bunch of people in taking Christian values. But anyway, yes, Christianity added a couple more uh, moral codes, moral rules. And Buddhism adds a lot more. You know, Buddhism is even more advanced than Christianity. Um, basically, kind of, you know... Um, it adds the, the, the dimension of karma and, you know, the karmic wheel, like, like you're, you, it takes more to getting into heaven than just being a member of a faith or, you know, it really is based on your deeds versus your sins and every little thing that you do has a positive and negative belief that all of that goes is, is, is part of Islam. You know, that's why, Buddhism to me is the the kind of the missing link between Christianity and Islam. You can't really discount it. I think we as Muslims should have way more respect for Buddhism. But of course it, it is very limited. It, in some in many ways it's way more it's just as blasphemous as the other religions. I mean, what is it? You know, there's no god and you know, the Buddha, kind of, you know, they worship him as like the closest thing to God. It's kind of silly. But, you know, just, but, but those, those foundational things that Buddha added were very good. I mean, you know, Buddha himself, I don't know if he wanted to be worshipped. It's his followers, these idiot. Sorry, I hate insulting these people. And, I, and, and, you know, Buddha was this Indian. It seems like it was these frigging Asians. They were the ones just like, let's, let's worship him. I mean, that could be totally corrupted. The reason Judeo, Judaism, Christianity, Buddhism, these things become corrupted is because the ruling elite in all these places, they take these spiritual teachings like, oh, Moses, Jesus, Buddha. These guys are catching on. They're teaching really holy teachings from God. We have to fucking stop this immediately. 
And so they, they turn them into these pagan religions, like, hey, worship a man instead. And we're going to, of course, the, the ruling elite are going to be the, the, the priesthood dictating how you worship this man. And, you know, they've tried to do that with Islam. They've tried that so much. I mean, not so much with the caliphate or the, the, the Ayatollah. It's, it's more with Wahhabism, the Saudis. See, they, they aren't, they aren't, they, 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 they police Islam. They can't do it in a religious way. So they police Islam in terms of just political and economic power. You know, Islam itself has never been corrupted. That's what's so great is the Quran has never been corrupted like the other holy books have. But Wahhabists and the Saudi family have made sure they, they've, they've fought pretty much all of the progressive and orthodox Islamic sects like Sufism and you know, uh, Shiite, you know, Shiites and, um, you know, the kind of more progressive Sunnism, the, the majority of Muslims are Sunnis, which in my opinion are already kind of lost. But, uh, <laughs> the, you know, the Wahhabis make sure that, you know, they, they, they dictate this extreme a fundamentalist version of Islam called you know, Salaf, Salafism, where you know anything after the first generation of Muslims is heretical. You you can't, which is insane. You you can't follow the example of you know the most successful and dominant and uh, you know Muslim movements ever, the Caliphate and you know uh, freaking Baghdad and the the you know the Turks. All all of these all of the people who actually made Islam, you know, this unstoppable, incredible force, reject all that. Let's follow the, the first generation of Muslims who, after the Prophet Muhammad died, peace be upon him, these people started warring with each other, killing each other, splitting into Shiites and Sunnis. Um, tons of these first Muslims, these, this, the greatest generation to the Salafists, they rejected Islam. They straight up rejected Islam and, you know, went in many different directions. They, 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 they you know, reverted back to their previous, you know, pagan barbarism and Zoroastrianism and all this stuff. All the stuff that had the Arabia being, you know, in the Dark Ages. So, yeah, forget Salafism is a joke. But, you know, the Saudis and the Wahhabists, they are totally under the Illuminati. Look at all of the state symbolism in Saudi Arabia. They, more than any other country, they use Masonic imagery. You know, uh, the, the all-seeing eye, the, the, the pyramids, even three sixes. It's everywhere. That's why Saudi Arabia is also the most um, liberal. It's, it, it's funny. You know, we, we think of them as being so backwards and stuff, but I mean, this is the place where they're encouraging Muslims to celebrate pagan religions like Halloween and Christmas. They're, they, you know, they, they bring in the, what is it, the WWE, which is, you know, a total Freemasonic, you know, uh, organization. Vince McMahon, a total corrupt uh, Freemason, a buddy of Donald Trump totally controlled um yeah i mean islam has never been corrupted like the other religions but it has been subdued um from within be because of these these sects like wahhabism um hold on i'm gonna kill a spider i'll try to not kill him i'll try and brush him outside okay i didn't i don't know if i killed him I sprayed bug, spray, insect killer. I have a lot of sympathy for insects, especially out of all of God's creatures. I'm a big fan of insects. Not so much arachnids, because they're predators. They're little vampires. <laughs> um, that's that's the, the Buddhist in me, the former Buddhist in me. You know, I've, I've, I've ran the spectrum. I've studied religion. 
I was an amateur comparative religion. Uh, what's the word when you're self-taught? Anyway, you know. Um, but yeah, I've I've researched so much religion. I've researched so much occultism. I dabbled in magic and even dark magic, black magic, faced horrible, you know, uh, um, horrible punishment for that. It's, you know, I, I, that, that totally convinced me God is real. He punished me for dabbling with demons and spirits and pagan deities. It's all under Satan because all that falls under Satan because Satan is this kind of arch uh, angel. Not like the other archangels, like, you know, a, a Gabriel and Michael. He is, he's, a, he's, he's above all of these fallen angels, I guess. You know, um, you know Islam is very, there, there's, because it's not in the Quran so much, there's, 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 there's no real concrete, um, there's no one belief about, you know, the nature of the fallen angels. Uh, we believe in, we call them jinn. We just kind of believe that they are these kind of pre-existing lower beings, which is actually in many ways way more uh, kind of advanced and modern and scientific, uh, you know, because, you know, let's be modern. You know, let's be, let's, let's think of it more rationally. Because, I mean, I, I know a lot of you are probably not Muslims. Um these are just interdimensional beings. They're lower beings from a dimension below uh, the material world. Um, there's so many dimensions. We exist in, like, what is it, the fourth dimension? You know, our, we're, we're these spiritual, mental beings occupying a three-dimensional uh, physical world. You know, and the, you know the, the second dimension is just kind of, uh, it's like the written, no, no. It's been a long time since I've thought about this. I forget what like the first and second dimensions are. I mean, I think it's thought and actual, just you know, uh, the you know, you know, yeah, the universe of thought and the universe of, of of you know, binary. Just the the, uh, you know, numbers and and black and white and before you even get into everything, everything in between. But even in the lowest, the lowest, and we're kind of like the kind of zero sum, you know, the zero dimension, that is where these, these, their beings have to live there too. And I mean, apparently they feed off of us. I mean, that's sort of what David Lynch's kind of world, his, his strange spiritual um, mythology, which I do not believe came, he came up with himself. I mean, he was, he came from Demolay just like Walt Disney. He was raised, he was given all of this occult knowledge that the elites believe and pass down, which does not make it correct, but it means, of course, they, they, there's, there's tons of knowledge that they keep from us and it leaks out into some of these people. And a lot of it, like I've already said, is kind of stuff we as Muslims already know and believe. We just have a more uh, God-fearing uh, interpretation of it whereas they they don't believe in god and if they do they think satan is this being that is going to become god because uh, the god that created us is some sort of um they see is what broken and evil they, they they see god as the devil and they see the devil as god they're just total backwards people you know, I mean, that's why they're total materialists. They they kind of crush their own souls to rule this world. And they believe everything is done in kind of service to ruling others. You see it with Jews. I mean, they'll do anything to protect this stolen land. <laughs> uh, they're just, you know, it's just wickedness it's passed down from these people. Don't Don't ever throw me in with the Jews are behind it all groups. It is there. They are just the, the middleman. That's they're just, just the way that they're the middleman and everything else. They take a cut without actually contributing anything. 
they're just the middleman of the satanic elite. The and they are the kind of um, they're the they're the managerial class of the Illuminati because Freemasonry Illuminati it's basically Zionism for Goyim. That's what it is. You know, you're taught to kind of believe in Lucifer and that Jews are going to bring Lucifer here and the Luciferian upper class priesthood will be under the Jews who rule and above those Jews will be the satanic, uh, you know, elites bloodline, like a thousand or so people, the committee of 300 or whatever it's called. I don't remember. Uh, we'll go into all that later. But Disney, screw Disney. Everything they put out is bad. I mean, just like, you know, you, I, I can, we can go in so many di different directions here. Marvel, the MCU, Star Wars. What else do they have? The Little Mermaid that's coming out. The Little Mermaid, I saw a really great article from Deadline that brought up a really great point. These films, and it's not specifically Disney. It's not just Disney, but you see all of this media coming out this liberal supposedly supposedly liberal woke media god i hate how they've corrupted the word woke but you see all this media it was like was it house of dragons and game of thrones and lord of the rings they're they're throwing all of these like black characters into uh european mythology and history like, oh, no, there was a black, uh, you know, what is it? Like, bl there's black interview with the vampire. There's black uh, um, elves and black little mermaid. And they're, they're, sp they're doing all of this because they want to erase slavery. That's what this deadline article, or I guess say uh, uh, a diversity specialist, which is ridiculous, a diversity specialist claims. That they're erasing slavery, and it's true. All these films are programming into little children, white and black, that, oh, black people had it pretty good in the Middle Ages in Europe. They were doing great. They were, you know, they were marrying royalty and they were, you know, in charge of European armies and they were having, they were happy and totally free. It's, t it's total crap. And they do this. You see it happening all over. They want black, because like, look at the last few generations of black people. Oh my God, they're so, one, they're total inwards, as in like they, they, they fit the stereotypes so, oh, it, like, it doesn't matter, they'll, they'll have like proper speech, they'll come from the middle class, but then they'll be these total evil, you know, racist stereotypes, you know, they're, they're so, they embrace it ever since it's post Obama, it's like, oh. We don't have to act, you know, we don't, we're done um, behaving well. We're going to act bad uh, be because, you know, our, our ancestors to, to almost like avenge our ancestors who were forced to be good. And it's like, no, they weren't forced to be good. They were good already. And it's just like you're just feeding into these negative Jewish created rap stereotypes. But anyway... But yeah, all the Disney, like, oh, this is the third Disney film with a black princess and a non-black prince, getting a black prince. That is the, the goal of these films. You know, the Disney princess formula genre is already so evil. You know, it's, it's MK Ultra mind control. They call it Project Monarch specifically. It is population control, making sure little girls are, subs are submissive to men sexually. But this is, this, is, this, show, this is one of the ways the West corrupts and twists Islam for their own uh, benefit. In Islam, yes, we teach women to be submissive to their husbands, not to all men. Of course, the West, they envied the way muslim women are submissive to them to the men to their men and they just they taught it as women being submissive to men period 
and not in, you know, everything we do as Muslims is in service to marriage. You get married before you even, you know, have sex. We are against fornication. Western men are like, no, no, we, we love fornication. We want to, we want, you know, we want men, our Western white men to just bang every woman and man and child. And, and as long as it's done in private and, you know, that's, that's all fine by us. So they've, 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 MK Ultra, Project Monarch specifically, Monarch as in the butterfly. That's why you see butterflies and all the Britney Spears, and all this imagery. It's, it's training little girls to be basically sex objects, sex dolls, living dolls. That's why you see in the last few generations this increase of Western young girls just being little whores and little sluts. And it started really with Madonna. It's, you know, of course we can go back to the women's lib and all that stuff, but it really ramped up with Madonna. The 80s is like when, you know, Freemasonry and the New World Order really took off. The Reagan era. Total Bohemian Grove president right there. But, you know, MTV... And openly Masonic TV. I mean, their their image, their their symbol was the Moon Man. <laughs> it lets you know right there. But yeah, MTV's entire purpose and pop culture really is all about turning, making sure young girls turn into sexually submissive little whores, who, you know, um, are in the workforce but always in like a secretary role and basically defending white supremacy white patriarchal supremacy all of them no matter what race no matter how liberal they claim to be it's always in service to basically the illuminati and nothing really changes it's just sort of like these these degrees and veneers of fakery you know that's why it's that it's a pyramid scheme they just add more and more levels all kind of serving this top you know little eye of the pyramid where the satanic elite are but yeah, Disney, total crap. The MCU, total military prop, you know, propaganda. Everything that the State Department wants is in those awful films. And they look at them. They're predictive programming. You know, what one film was the Avengers Infinity movies. They predict, they don't predict, you know, Thanos, he snaps and half the universe is wiped out. And then what happens? A pandemic where tons of people die. And then the next film, oh, he Thanos brings back half, you know, the, the, the people back. And then, you know, it's, then what we're calling the pandemic, the Great Reset. This is coming from liberal news media, mainstream news media. They're calling it the Great Reset. They're calling it a great economic reset. And what was the Great Reset for? Let's go into it. The Great Reset happened this was always planned. You can find tons of Masonic, Illuminati, CIA media in the past predicting that there was going to be a a, uh, a virus outbreak to lower the population. Um, but why did it happen now? Us conspiracy theorists, we we heard for a long time of Agenda Twenty One and uh, you know Agenda uh, Agenda Twenty Thirty. This was supposed to happen in the Twenty Thirties. Why did it happen? in 2020 why well because trump and this is not to say trump is some kind of great disruptor he is but not in the way we believe and not in any not even in the most positive way that his cult-like fans believe trump is trump serves trump is not fighting the the powers that be in any way but he is not one uh, he's not one of their chosen um insiders he's chosen as a patsy he was chosen to as to be used by them he's he's controlled opposition definitely i mean think about it uh, he was elected how because alex jo alex jones told the right that the that the that there's a you know CIA CIA insiders that are fighting these the the, the, the good the good uh, government officials within our government are fighting the deep state 
they they picked Trump. They picked Trump to actually take uh, take to take down the pedophiles and the Democrats and the the communists. And he's just feeding his you know all this crap. Alex Jones, a total Zionist shill, um, a Masonic shell too. He totally controlled himself. These guys. I, I think that there's a lot of truth to it. I do believe that there was a right wing. There's a right wing faction of the deep state who wanted more control. They're the, you know, because the deep state is basically neocons and neolibs. The Bidens, the Bushes, the Obamas, the Clintons. And there's there's a part of the, the deep state intelligence com community in D.C. They want a bigger piece they want you know more control they want you know their voices heard they want like a, a a seat at the table they want a seat at the table of the new world order so they brought in trump um from i guess masonic ties and definitely zionist ties he's in debt to all these jewish bankers who you know saved him from bankruptcy and gave him all this media exposure as like you know wait he's just like a manchurian candidate almost for them but still, the deep state don't like this. They hate this. They he upset their their timetable. Trump did nothing really to. Trump never set out to do anything to stop these people in any way. Besides, actually, helping the economy. This is what they hated. They hated that he helped the economy, and he he disrupted the kind of economic uh, decline that they had scheduled. They they've they've you know nine eleven. All of these recessions, uh, the pandemic, all these, all these things have been done, you know, from 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 JFK since, to bring down America, bring down the West, so um, a new world order can take over with you know a digital currency and all these things. Why did they spring all the shit now? Because they wanted to stop Trump's re-election, because Trump was doing something that Trump was. Trump was doing something that they couldn't have counted on, which is probably accidental, but maybe not. He was helping China and Russia establish a an economic, um, you know, uh, uh, BRICS. You know, BRICS. Their 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 new, um, I guess, economic you know, safeguard against the new world order. Because, you know, the way that the New World Order and the Illuminati and, and Jews are taking over the world, or at least the Western world, is from, you know, central banking, the Rothschild banking. And this is what, the, you know, the Nazis were warning us about. Not just the Nazis, but, you know, the so-called axis of evil with Japan and Italy and France. They were, and Iran, and you know, a few more parts of the Muslim world, um, they were warning us that these Rothschild bankers were taking over central banking. There's only a few countries that they don't control, you know, mainly Muslim and communist countries and na a couple nationalist countries. Because, you know, you have to take over the banks. If you're going to have a new world order, you need a one world currency and... China and Russia have been against this. They do not in, a, in a more countries. They've got more countries together, and they're all putting their future economic futures behind the yuan. And this is changing everything. American media is distracting us so much right now from this big world game-changing development, which is BRICS, Brazil, Russia, uh, India... China and South Africa and you see parts of South America joining and um, I think was it Saudi Arabia is considering joining lots of different people are considering joining and they're just all abandoning the US dollar and in the why did the pandemic happen because China was China was taking off economically I mean, you see just like I mean, they call it the Wu. They tried to, you know, call it the Wuhan virus or whatever, and they claimed it came from China. And they tried to almost 
you know, blame China for this whole fucking world pandemic, even though we know it was a fucking, <laughs> it was Fauci's lab leaking it for Bill Gates, you know, a total Illuminati handler. They're protecting the new world order. That's what the pandemic happened for. They wanted to stop China's um, great economic recovery, not even recovery, just their, their, their success. And the pandemic hit China hard, but it did not stop BRICS. And the New World Order, the Illuminati are pissed. They blame Trump for this. Because this is this is the biggest thing that can just stop the New World Order is BRICS. Because if you don't, if these people are economically free from us, this is what's going to happen. Oh, hold on, I see the spider again. Sorry, spider doused him with insect killer <laughs> pretty ironic considering what we're talking about but yes BRICS is you know these countries are going to be economically free from the US dollar this is the only reason that they've gone along with so much stuff is because you know the West Israel the UK and the US they've just put sanctions on anyone who you know refuses to go along with being their puppet anyone who wants to uh, not fall into economic decline like the rest of the world. They just go in and make sure these people are wrecked sooner, or they create wars, or they you know blame them, or they assassinate their leaders. If all these countries banding together to have their own strong economy outside of Western, uh, the Western economy, these people they're going to be free, and they don't have to listen to the the Illuminati anymore. I mean, Saudi Arabia, like I've already talked about, they're total just Jew-run Illuminati puppets. You know, they're the biggest enemies of Muslims worldwide. They sold out their own people. They're only, they're probably, they're not even real Muslims. The Saudi royal family, that is. Um, but I'll go into that a little bit later. But these people are trying to break away from the New World Order and Zionism. That's a huge, it's so, that's amazing. I mean, it, it, it has the West, the Western ruling powers shaking right now. And they're distracting us with all of this stuff because this BRICS thing is going to change the world. That's why they're ramping up the Ukrainian war. That's why they're suddenly, you see Democrats coming after China. They're, they're just, they've turned into a total warmongering party. They want all of us to just hate China. They want us to go to war with China. They, they, you see Biden going nuts with the U.S. military budget because he wants to go to war with China. They are totally willing to go to World War III to protect the U.S.'s economic dominance across the world because it's all about protecting the New World Order. That's all they care about. They've sacrificed billions and billions of lives to it. We all live in misery because of the New World Order. This is what Freemasonry is all about. Sacrifice any and everything so the ruling elite can rule because they are they believe they are divinely picked for it. And it's not the Jews. Yes, the Jews believe they're chosen, but they don't realize they're just they're puppets of these older bloodlines who've always believed that they're, you know, handpicked by God to rule. You know, the Holy Roman blood, what is it? The Holy Roman Empire? You know, the Holy Roman Empire, that is what corrupted Europe. Um, the British royal family came from Germany. They broke from their German roots, which it's very interesting. Germany, what makes Germany unique among Europe? Um, one, um, they, most of them migrated from Iran, so they bring a, a pre-Islamic uh, Middle Eastern kind of uh, government, way of governing to European um, culture, I suppose. And two, Germany was ruled by many different king. They were split into many different kingdoms. The, the, the British royal family were just one kind of uh, mediocre royal family. They were, they were, 
they left because they were so unsuccessful. They wanted to rule everyone, whereas all of these other German um, monarchs or, uh, you know, whatever, whatever these, these German, uh, monarchs, they, they lived peacefully with each other. There was, no one was trying to dominate Germania. It, it, because that is just sort of foreign to them. They were bringing, you know, Iranian kind of worldview. And, you know, Europe is, was run by the Romans. And so how are we going to bring the Celts and the, um, you know, whatever, just the white people, Caucasians, under, you know, Roman rule? Well, let's, let's have this British royal family who serve us. And they're going to pretend to kind of stand for Christianity and, you know, white people, but really they're just serving the, the, these dark satanic bloodlines who are not specifically European. They go back to, as we we've talked about, uh, you know, Egypt and Mesopotamia and, uh, uh, you know, parts of the Levant. Uh, um, but, but really what they all trace back to and this is the big hold on your pants thing. You know, I'm either going to lose you here or I'm going to blow your mind. What is the satanic elite? Where do they really come from? What, are, what is their real worldview? What is their real religion about? What is their, their, their new world order? What is, what is this all about? They're, they're rebuilding, you know, we Abrahamic people will call it Babylon. But what, do, what is it really pre you know, what is this lost history that they are trying to bring back? Atlantis. That is what it is all about. All of these satanic, you know, uh, the satanic bloodlines, which are all over the world, in, in, in Asia, in, in South America, and at, even at parts of Africa, how are all these, how are these people everywhere? And how have they been ruling all across the world when, you know, before there was a jet set, before there was even, uh, you know, you know, like how did, how did, how are they everywhere? Atlantis. Atlantis was a real place in the Atlantic, the middle of the Atlantic between the Americas and Europe and Africa. And it was the first maritime culture. This is the lost civilization, the first great, first great civilization. I mean, this is, this is the t original Tower of Babel. This is, I guess you'd say, the real first. I wouldn't. I don't know. I wouldn't. I was gonna say multiculturalism. I don't know. They were because they didn't really blend anything. They just ruled everybody. So they didn't bring in any enlightenment to anybody. They didn't bring people together. They enslaved tons of people. Um, you know, a lot of our races. It's like oh, how are white people? You know, like you know, you see like these like how are how do South Americans have the genetics of? you know, these people over here, and how is that possible, and how are blacks over here, like, you know, that's all from Atlantis, Atlantis, as I said, it was the first maritime culture, and we're talking about a, 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 a people, a civilization that was at the, the end of the Ice Age, back when, I mean, this is hard to even fathom, back when there were still dinosaurs in the ocean, because yes, dinosaurs were killed on land. You know, they were they went extinct on land. But you know, like the plesiosaurus, that thing would have been in the megalodon. The thing would have been in the ocean. Still, why would they have died out? Besides, you know, um, depleting large organisms. You know, in their 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 diet or whatever. This is why. You know, why do the why does Satanism and the the elite? Why do they claim? Why, why is all of this 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 reptilian um, conspiracy theorist shit? Why do and that's 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 brought they promote that, not us. It's not people like they laugh at David Icke. They think like, oh, this is just some crazy, you know, Christian nut conspiracy thing that the you know dinosaur people or you know reptilian people will run the world. No, they believe David Icke is just he's he's just a unfortunately literalist minded person who believes what the British royal family tr privately believes or you know privately you know believes and tells their their minions which is 
they are they have you know these blue bloods are descendant from a superior race and you know us they they don't care about most people because they believe we're from some lower uh you know they believe humans are you know they're humans too we're humans but they came from these reptilian beings you know that i guess uh that that lived in the middle of the earth you know the reason that so much and it's really when you think about it science fiction itself its roots when you look at the earliest science fiction it's mainly about atlantis and it's and a lot of it is about dinosaurs in the middle of the earth why is that because this is this is some of the earliest occult knowledge that's come out um a lot of the this atlantean folklore and and mythology is that they and this is also a part of like the higher illuminati freemasonic knowledge this is like 33 degree shit they believe that they came from space that they were reptilian gods that reptilian deities fell from the heavens and mated with humans and that is the ruling elite you know that is the blue blood they are i guess you know they have special privy to talk to these uh higher beings and that's that is that is what satan is basically believe they they worship snakes you know the, the the snake is their symbol they drink blood and it, it they it, they have these crazy visions they get them in touch with satan and deities and they get possessed by the fucking reptilian evil interdimensional aliens and that's why they have to do crazy you know violent things when they're under the spell all of that all of that is the foundation of paganism let's go back thousands and thousands more than th- i mean like 10,000 years, maybe 100,000 years, earliest human spirituality is animism. You know, the religion, these, these, you know, we're talking like ancient Africa, which would have been more like Pangea at this point. These early shaman, the people, the first religious leaders were just crazy witch doctors who worshipped snakes. And they worshipped snakes and spiders and these predators because there was power in that not just because there was power they were powerful predators and so you know people feared them and they were thought of as ooh, you could get the rest of the fucking tribe to you know be afraid of that um it's because these animal these creatures have venom and these shaman would drink the venom and they with the blood you know why is the snake so important to the uh to early pagan theology and in in satanism today because you drink the snake's blood and you drink the venom at the same time you will trip and have these crazy religious experiences and talk to demons and all this shit and then the witch doctor who's stoned out of his mind is probably saying you know a lot of based crazy shit which is blowing people's minds and this is the birth of alchemy i just described the, the that is alchemy the original alchemy was drinking snake's blood with snake venom you know you're combining opposites to kind of and that's medicine that's why you see the the caduceus is two snakes uh climbing you know the kind of magic wand yeah, i'm going in deep here guys and you know this is this is you know and that is the that is the root of not just alchemy is the the root of magic and art that is something you learn from the freemasonry that has been hidden from common knowledge uh that's and that's one of the most kind of most important occult uh tidbits right there but yes alchemy uh you know yes but that you know that is with satanism and you know atlantean and it's all it's all atlantis real pagan religion that's what they want to bring back they ruled atlantis their ancestors ruled atlantis and their sins uh brought a terrible fiery calamity how familiar does that sound and that brought you know crashing waves Uh uh-oh what am i talking about here 
you've read this in your Bible and your Torah. Um, yeah, man, all of these Jewish folk tales that we learn that are the foundations of our, you know, biggest religions, these things are based on some, these, you know, on, on, on real things that happen. Of course, they're exaggerated. I mean, you know, Noah didn't put every friggin' animal <laughs> into a boat. But yes, certain people, I guess maybe Noah was the the one, the main one, encouraging people to abandon Atlantis. He saw it was falling. And you see uh, Anne Rice put this into Interview the Vampire because Interview the Vampire is about the uh, um, Illuminati in their history. It really is. It's in she, fact, she actually, one of her last books was, I think, it was all about Atlantis and how that's where the the vampire dynasty started because they're, you know, just a metaphor or, you know, yeah, they represent the Illuminati. I guess more than the satanic uh, bloodlines. Um, so, yeah, I've covered pretty much everything you guys need to know. Um, yeah, it's all about Atlantis. The reptilian thing, is it's not real. They're, these people aren't really reptilian. I don't, I, can, I can't believe they have any real relation to dinosaurs or ancient reptilian race or any of this shit that they, that they believe and that they've adapted. Because originally they believed they were from um, Mars or some other planet. They thought that, you know, they believe in panspermia. They believed that the earliest life came from, you know, space and... You know, we're kind of like their, their pet race and they're the great race. And you see this put into so much of their media. Flintstone, the Disney Flintstones movie, the Disney Marvel um, G.I. Joe movie. Um, and talk about the eight, the 87 animated film, which is incredible. You need, to, you need to see it. So if you want to know what like these people believe, that movie lays it out. But also... Super Mario Brothers, which is also produced by a Disney subsidiary. I'm talking about the, the old school 90s Mario movie where, you know, a Trump-like Koopa uh, rules a reptilian uh, world underneath ours where a pandemic, viral pandemic is, you know, uh, killing everyone. And, oh, they need to reinstate this Masonic... Uh, king uh, Mushroom King and literally the very end of the movie Lars Henriksen is, is he plays the you know Mushroom King who's you know put back in power after dethroning the evil Trump like King Koopa he, he it's Lance Henriksen in a a actual f Freemasonry Illuminati throne and you can watch the clip it is the same throne that Stanley Kubrick used in Eyes Wide Shut the same golden throne with a red seat and two um, like griffin dragons on, as the, on the sides of the chair um, and yeah oh my gosh Eyes Wide Shut it is a perfect beautiful I mean, his whole career, Kubrick's whole career is about exposing the New World Order and the Illuminati and the Deep State and the CIA. But specifically, Eyes Wide Shut is all about the monarch program. That entire film, the symbology and the, the, the subtle um, visual innuendos, it's all about how the Illuminati are programming young girls to be sexual objects and you know you see there the daughter tom cruise's daughter in the film named helena at the very beginning of the film you see these two old bald men at the illuminati party where of course uh you know this this kind of creepy luciferian guy is trying to hook up with <laughs> uh nicole kidman and that's a joke because you know, Freemasonry and Illuminati, the way they get you to join is by proving, by having sex with your wife. They want to make sure, they, they, they don't believe in monogamy. And these orgies are all about getting kind of blackmail and bringing you into their, 
you know, homosexual sodomy and all this stuff. But the two old men at the beginning in that Illuminati party, the very last scene, the very, the penultimate shot before it goes into a two shot between Tom and Nicole, you see the two old men from the Illuminati party are at the toy store. They reappear again and they lead Tom and Nicole's daughter, Helena, away, showing that they are pedophiles. And that is what the whole movie is about, is about the pedophile nature of these Illuminati parties. And, you know, it's all about, and it's all about the pedophilia and the homosexuality at these parties. And if you look at the entire career and the filmography of Stanley Kubrick from Lolita, which is all about um, a man being basically um, coerced and controlled by pedof his pedophilia, and it's all specifically about oral sex with the underage girls. Watch The Shining, which many believe is all about, I mean, it's overtly about um, Illuminati parties, but many believe that it is about, you know, the, the Apollo 11 uh, moon landings being faked and Kubrick having some involvement in that. And, you know, 2001, A Space Odyssey is almost a companion film. But in The Shining, what the very final shot shows that Jack is, you know, some reincarnated uh, member of this Freemasonic or Illuminati cult who had parties and orgies at the Overlook Hotel. The Overlook Hotel, brilliant. But you see Wendy, she goes upstairs and she sees... You know, like the, the the most shocking thing in the entire movie. Well, actually, room was it room twenty three, which is actually changed in the book. It's room twenty two, I believe, and Cooper changed it to room twenty three because there's actually was it twenty three million miles between um, the Earth and the Moon. But room twenty three is where we see is where Jack kind of learns who he is, and he and you know, and room twenty three is the mystery. It's, you know, some, some drowned young woman who's actually a, 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 you know, the spirit of an old woman. What that film is saying is Jack murdered that girl in that room. And she was, you know, I guess some sort of uh, young girl he had sex with and he was covered up. And that is his sin. When you go upstairs and Wendy sees some old man getting blown by some young person in a bear costume with their ass hanging out kind of implying sodomy but there, there's yeah the bear is blowing this illuminati man in my opinion when you when you add up all of kubrick's films and what is the message here he it seems to me when you, when you factor in the the meanings of dr strange love specifically oh man we're going to have to do an entire video about Kubrick and his filmography. But Kubrick was approached by the CIA to film, help them film the moon landings because they did not want to appear as losers in the space race. And people think, oh my God, that's insane. Why would our American government lie to us about the moon landings? We... Look, I'm not saying that we never went. I think eventually we went, and maybe, maybe we went in Apollo thirteen, uh, Apollo eleven. But the fact remains: these people, their number one fear was communism winning. That was what the Cold War was all about. And in fact, oh God, what is it called? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and look it up here, people. The, they, and I'm pretty sure it was JFK who passed it. There's an act that was passed. Hold on here. There was an act that was passed that basically says that the CIA is legally allowed to lie to us. In the to lie to us and to uh, foreign intelligence, you know, like to to other countries about our own. Um, they're, they're legally allowed to lie if it's in the interest of national security. 
that's why they have tons of movies that are, you know, full of lies and propaganda that 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 uh, make us look superior, that make us look like superheroes, that 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 you know tell that we're going to create false flags and invade countries. They do all of that, and they get away with it legally. And the moon landings were, is, is a perfect example. They faked, they filmed the moon landings because they just, they didn't want communism to win. In, in, the, in the event that communists went to space first, they needed to have a fucking, a, a moon landing even if we weren't really ready, and even if we were gonna gonna go, and we had the technology, we were we were gonna go eventually. We needed to beat them. We needed to cheat and beat them and have this fake moon landing. And they got Kubrick to do it because, you know, he was probably a must. You know, he has some kind of ties. We're not sure what, but from his own films and what he's released in his and implied in his films. It seems to me Stanley Kubrick was invited to an Illuminati party or, you know, there's there's actual, there's tons of pictures of him with NASA scientists. But he was invited to a Illuminati party, he had some kind of oral, he got oral sex from an underage prostitute girl, and that is what sealed his silence. Forever, and he's in all of his films. Highlight that, that that was what, that they got this dirt on him. And I don't, I don't know. We don't know if he actually did the new the moon landings or if they just approached him about it. But he had this insider information that they faked the moon landings, and that communism was their main enemy, which I mean is a big part of, you know, uh, Full Metal Jacket and all this stuff. And, you know, of course, uh, Dr. Strangelove. It's all about... He, he, he's privy to all of their information, but they had dirt on him. The only way he could speak out is by putting it in symbology. And it's very funny. He's almost like an anti-Mason. He uses the same Masonic methods of symbolism and propaganda, but he uses it specifically to expose them. And that's why they hated him. That's why he could barely get films funded, even though he was the most, you know, famous and respected director of his time, filmmaker of his time, even though, because they brought him in to Hollywood to do Spartacus. That didn't, that went south, that went sideways. And I mean, Spartacus, I mean, that's total Masonic shit right there. Homosexual, starring Kirk Douglas, a Jew. Uh, But anyway, that went sideways. They kind of banned him from making Hollywood movies. So he goes to Britain, starts doing these films, kind of exposing them. Um, JFK is killed. And I mean, a lot of his films are about that. Specifically the CIA. I mean, his films are about the CIA killing JFK. He explains, you know, their, their reasons for lying. I mean, Full Metal Jacket is all about these guys just lying their asses off in the in the... You know, with the excuse of it's for the good of everybody. We need lies. We in eyes wide shut. I mean, all of his films are about it. And oh my God, Clockwork Orange. My God, totally about you know propaganda and the the righteous lie that needs to be told by these deep state controllers and overseers. So yeah, I think I've covered enough for today. In summary. None of this stuff bothers me. It, I mean, it bothers me that so many people are lost and don't see it or have sold out to it. But I mean, that's just the na- that's human nature. Most people, have, we're, we're bred to be sheep. Most people are fucking idiots, specifically here in the West. The most selfish, just, ugh, people. You know, I'm a, I'm a big, I'm a, Islam, I mean, Islam, it's it's just the truest, purest uh, connection we've ever had to God. It is the it is the one pure religion, the untainted. It's the one untainted religion. And you know the U.S. government has done a lot, and not just the U.S. government, but the 
you know, Masonic orders and all that. They've done a lot to make sure that Islam is demonized and never takes root here. The three biggest enemies to the West, to Western uh, Illuminati, New World Order, globalism, is Islam, that's their oldest, you know, enemy, communism, it's like their second oldest enemy, and black solidarity, black, because, you know, they've, they've screwed, they, there's no one that they've screwed over more than black people, and there's no one that they've brought to heal more than black people, there's no one that they've turned into useful idiots more than black people, they, they are terrified of black people allying specifically with Islam and communism, I mean, look at it, the Black Panthers, they were black communists. Our government went out of their way to assassinate their leaders and, and, and you know, corrupt them and turn them into, you know, the modern day Crips. You know, the, the, the Crips were originally just kind of post-Black Panthers trying to police their communities with, um, you know, turning the gangs into something communist and good. I mean, that, that's what the Tupac was all about. And so what happens? They've created the Bloods. They funded the Bloods. The Bloods are... Look at the Bloods. Look at every rapper that it's a Blood. They are all about... They're total sellouts. They're total capitalists. They're total Zionists. They're total CIA. They're all CIA assets. And they, you know, vamp life is their whole thing. They're all about, you know, kind of like occult shit. Yeah, they were created basically by the government to stop Crips, the communist element within the Crips. But going back, black Islam is something that they fear and hate so much. You know, that's why they, they you know, created the Nation of Islam. You know, Fuad, whatever is, what is his name, the guy who created it? Some weird, fake Arab who had ties to Freemasonry. He taught this bastardized bootleg form of Islam to American, African Americans. And so much, so much of their stuff has very little to do with Islam and has, it's total Masonic shit. They literally believe that the white man, uh, that, that, that the humanity comes from space, aliens, and that, uh, you know, the white man is kind of created from uh, some kind of ancient scientist. This is what the, this is what the Illuminati believe themselves. The only thing is they, they twisted it to, you know, they made it like backwards, like, oh, no, uh, that is why the white man is bad. Instead of, became, instead of being a white supremacist fantasy, they turned it into a black supremacist fantasy. But it's the same goddamn crazy Illuminati occult narrative. It has nothing to do with Islam. But in, you know, the, the bootleg bastardized form of the bootleg bastardized Islam is this uh, five percenter bullshit that I, that I kind of have some kind of, I, I, I like, I like the, 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 um, what do you want to call it? They have this, they have this cool belief and they, it's it's central to five percenter, uh, nation of gods and earths, <laughs> theology or worldview. But actually, it comes from uh, I think, nation of Islam leaders, either uh, Elijah Muhammad or Farrakhan, one of them, came up with this idea that, you know, ninety five percent of the world, ninety five percent of people are just total you know, sheep, and 15% are, um, is it 15 or is it 10%? I can't remember. I think 15% uh, are, 15 or 10% are wolves preying on those sheep, and then 5% are aware of it and trying to fight the sheep, fight the wolves and free the sheep. I really, I love that. I wish, i like to adopt that mindset into you know a more mainstream context but yeah i think that's an exaggeration it's almost kind of a it's almost that's a toxic kind of defeatist 
mindset, but it's true at this point. I really do believe 5% of the world really know what the hell is going on. Or I guess 10%, or is it 10 or 15% know what's going on, but only 5% actually want to stop it and make things better. But I think that's that's an exaggeration. I think there's billions of us Muslims. There's billions of communists. And of course, not all of them are smart or aware or even good. There's enough good people out there. You know, the answer is Islamic communism. And oh my God, that has got to be the thing that keeps the Illuminati awake at night, that fear. That's what BRICS is probably so scary. BRICS is so scary to them because it's, it's led by communism, supported by nationalists, and now Muslims are joining? Oh my God. Could you imagine you get anti-globalist, Muslim communist? It'll be fucking paradise on earth. It'll be utopian. You know, economic prosperity with a godly um, moral, you know, social morality with, you know, anti-globalism, anti-Zionism, anti-capitalism, anti-white supremacy, anti-racism, anti-sexism. Oh my God. This is, this is the shit that they fear more than anything. And it is, it's, they've, they've, They've sacrificed billions of people to stop it. Not just, you know, Muslims and black people, but their own people, their own slaves, the white man and the white people. They're, you know, willing minions and idiots sacrifice themselves to join wars, to fight us evil Muslims and black people and communists. It's, it's inevitable, you know? The same way Marx taught that, you know, Communist revolution is inevitable. It, it, you know, it's 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 going to be more than just communism. Because yes, I think with with China, I think with BRICS, communism is inevitable. But we d we don't want the same way Soviet communism was really kind of a, a negative form of communism. And unfortunately, demonized all of communism just because Soviet, you know, the Soviets are specifically, you know, yeah. Bolshevikism and Bolshevism and, you know, Leninism and Maoism, all that stuff is just bad. We, we don't want this Chinese communism to take over. We want, I, we want it to be useful in spreading communism and... You know, fighting globalism, fighting Western imperialism. Yes, F hopefully even fighting, maybe defeating the satanic world elite. You know, in the Illuminati. Let's let's hope that they destroy the new world order. But let's not hope that China takes over in their place because they they would be maybe not as evil, but they're they're not good. You know, they're secular atheist. They they wipe they they they're they're sadistic against you know religious people or anyone who I mean they they really want Chinese dominance they want China to be I don't think that they're true Marxists at all we need what we need is BRICS is going to take over BRICS is going to keep rolling and the new world the Western New World Order is going to keep falling even if Biden's crazy ass sends us into World War III. Capitalism is going to fall. Western imperialism is, is going to fall. Zionism, the New World Order, Satanism, all of it. It's all going to fall eventually because people are waking up. Even if they're not becoming communist, you know, there, there's all these competing worldviews are just fighting the New World Order. And they're, they're, they're at odds with each other. You know, Islam, communism, nationalism. But America, America, I believe, what's inevitable is America is going to turn socialist. Because with BRICS taking over and this awful economic decline that's not going to stop anytime soon, we're going to turn to socialism. And 
we're going to need a socialism or a communism that is against Chinese communism. We're going to need an American form of communism or socialism. You know, it needs to be nationalist, in my opinion. It needs to be a national communism, not national socialism, even though, you know, Nazi Germany was not national socialism at all. It took elements of socialism, but it was just kind of fascistic nationalism. We need to learn from the example, the, the, the errors of national socialism, you know, Germany's national socialism. And we need to have our own national communism. We need to have communism on our terms. Communism that is God-fearing, that is not Soviet-based, that is not, um, you know, not, uh, yeah, just not Soviet or Maoist. Or, or It needs to be American. It needs to be American communism. And that means... Um, religious freedom that means um, racial um, egalitarianism that means reparations that means um, restoring traditional American values like uh, traditional gender roles and defunding the police actual having actually having communities you know, policing each other, policing themselves, or, you know, uh, we need communism, you know, each state should be a fucking, should be like its own little country, we need to bring back um, sovereignty, you know, the, the federal government is just too much power, and it's only serving globalism, is run by a handful of evil bloodlines that don't give a shit about anybody's culture. We do need, you know, I, I, I'm, a big, I'm a big defender and proponent of culture. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I want multiculture, but I don't believe every culture is equally good. I mean, I think Islamic culture is the best, seriously. I mean, Western culture, there's a lot of good in it, but it is just a ton of bad in it. There's, you know, uh, African-American culture, there's a lot of good in it, but there's a ton of bad in it. Asian culture, same thing. Because none of it is rooted, it's all rooted in just kind of racial tribalism. It's not rooted, or, or capitalism. It's not rooted in anything... What makes Islam great is it is a universal religion. It's all about peace. It's all about, you know, erasing, uh, you know, racial tribalism. It's about, you know, bring all our, all our religions under one God, uh, the original God, the Creator. It's all about. Uh, it, its goal is to eliminate nationalism, but first you have to destroy a whole. Well, nationalism is a weird thing, you know. I'm a nationalist, but Islam is against nationalism. What I believe is that what they we're against what what Allah wants is for us. To, he doesn't want Islamic nation versus Islamic nation. He doesn't want nationalism within Islam, the Islamic world. But the nationalism that we're talking about, that we need, is against Western globalism. It's just against globalism and Western globalism. What we need is communism. You know, communism is not nationalism, but it is uh, it's internationalism. And that's what we need. I'm an internationalist, I suppose, which is a, still a kind of form of nationalism. You know, nationalism is just about having national sovereignty, letting nations dictate themselves and not being, not being, not just being service to a global um, body, you know? Because... 
I don't know. Yeah, that's that's almost something we can pick up on more. I need to gather my thoughts on that. It's something I haven't fully fleshed out. But yeah, this is a great point to stop. Thank you for listening. Like and subscribe. I hopefully will have more content to stir your brain, inspire you, live better, live more in service to God, stop stressing. Because, yeah, the world's on fire. The world's run by (laughs) demon-possessed Satanists and all their minions. And you're probably surrounded by a bunch of zombies. But this each generation is building towards uh, a peaceful revolution. You know, pray for that. Pray for peaceful resolu- pre- revolution. I didn't even get into any of the, the electoral politics that are going on. RFK Jr., whether he's any good. He's better than... You know, a Biden or a Trump or a DeSantis, but he's very, very flawed. A total Zionist. I don't think he really knows how deep the rabbit hole is, even though he knows the CIA killed his family. He's totally against them. He knows the pandemic was a plandemic. But I don't think he either... I I don't think he has the balls to truly stop the New World Order. I think he can do a lot of good. I think he can help reform our country enough so, you know, someone else can pick up the pieces. That's sort of what we need, you know. Just one guy to get in there and keep making things better, a disruptor. And I mean, I think he's he's a better disruptor than Trump would be. Because, you know, the liberals are so, the liberals and neocons are so hyper-focused on Trump and they are, They're celebrating because yesterday they got the Trump indictment. Oh, great. They've cooked up some phony bullshit that they let Hillary Clinton get away with. Because it's all about stopping his reelection. It would be great if RFK Jr. steals this thing and and all their sabotage was for nothing. We get a guy who's better than Trump was. But I'm afraid for RF Kennedy. And like, you know, JFK was not some great, great man. JFK is actually the man who sold the world, in, in my opinion. I think he unleashed the CIA, and then they killed him when he tried to put them back into the genie bottle. So it's very sad what happened to him. He was the last president who meant well. Well, I mean, Carter. But Carter, there's a lot of, I've heard a lot of bad things about Carter. Um But JFK, JFK, we, we kind of hold him up to like this Jesus level, which is a bit ridiculous. He's, he's who all of the Democrat presidents ape when they want to, you know, promise to do good and bring us back to the good old days of the Democratic Party. He's going to take us back to, you know, before they're going to, they're going to re, they're going to, you know, take us back to Camelot and they're going to take us back to 1963. We, we make fun of the MAGA people make America great again. That's what the Democrats do every goddamn time. They're all pretending that they're going to be the next Kennedy and they're going to take us back to 1963 even though none of these fucks want to... Sorry. I'm trying to avoid cursing. But none of these people want to expose who killed Kennedy or go after the people that killed Kennedy because they're all owned by the CIA. They're owned by the Zionists. They're owned by Israel. They're owned by all these people. The Democratic Party is totally corrupt. So J- so RFK wanting to run as a Democrat, what is he doing? It would be great if he reformed the Democratic Party in some way, but how? How when he's run by Zionists? He's going to hand... They're going to take over again. You know, he's, he's going to hand... The Democratic Party right back into the same evil people. So yeah, I'm not I'm not too excited about RFK. I think it's a good thing. I think that he's enlightening a lot of Democrats who are total just morons. You know, they don't believe anything. They don't believe there's a conspiracy in anything. And they call everything. They call every conspiracy theory a right-wing conspiracy theory. Even 
the assassination of their only, their last decent president, their last popular president, they call a right-wing conspiracy theory. But RFK, what, what he can do is get a lot of Democrats to start questioning power or start fighting power in some way, even though he's, he's, he doesn't have the balls to really name names and take down the heavy hitters. At least he might move them. I don't know. More to the center because the current Democratic Party is so far right wing. It's ridiculous. I, I serious, seriously believe they are to the right of many Republicans. It's so insane how things have just become so backwards. The Democratic Party is just so about censorship and authoritarianism and fascism, really. They're all about corporations. They're all about crazy population control, like transgenderism and, you know, uh, grooming and whatever. I don't, I don't want to start sounding like, you know, start echoing a lot of the shit that the right is saying. But the right, what, what's being deemed as right-wing conspiracy theory is just anti-liberalism. Communists are anti-liberal because liberalism is just freaking centrism. It's 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 not even left wing centrism. It's just centrism. We what right wingers call centrism is just <laughs> right wing, just being right wing. They, I guess right wing uh, progressive, right wing progressives are Repub are the libertarian Republicans or the right wing Republicans or whatever. I'm just I'm starting to ramble here. Honestly, I want. Kanye to run for president. I think he's easily, out of everyone who's thrown their hat into the presidential race, he's easily the most popular with the youth. He's the most outspoken. He's the most honest. He's got, but he's he's got the whole Christian nationalist thing. I think that's so toxic. Oh my God, that would just be. I think he'd he would be a big he might be a bigger enemy to communists and Muslims than anyone. So I don't know. Yay. Yay's on like a weird, weird journey. I hope he finds the right people. Stop freaking hanging out with, you know, twenty year old Christian nationalist and maybe start hanging around people your own age who know something about politics, know something about economics, know something about American history, not just, you know, Christian conspiracy theories. I mean, that's such a, uh, whatever. We're in such a bad place. With bricks and everything, my future is not even focused in staying in America. I think America is sinking. And I would rather be in the Middle East. I think the Middle East is going to start really standing on its own. And you see, like, there's so many things. I forget which countries, but there's some amazing projects that they're trying to do with the economic backing that they're getting from BRICS. They're going to be a part of... I, I just want to be a part of BRICS. I think that's the future. I think America's dominance is done uh, in the next few years, you're going to see America just start f sinking and falling. And it's sad. I don't root for it. It's just, it's a fact. This is what's happening. And you're not hearing me uh, being anti-America and plotting against America. This is just, this is the writings on the wall. America's falling. The empire is falling. The Roman Empire is falling again. <laughs> we're, we're doing everything wrong that they did. And everything Atlantis did wrong before that. Because it's the same evil people that get in control every single time and until we learn from that and learn who they are and erase their control and their means of control and their evil ideology off the face of the earth we aren't going to be safe and that's what islam is about islam is about wiping the only the thing is a lot of people fear like oh islam takes over Everyone has to become Muslim. That's wrong. 
Jews and Christians are allowed to uh, exist in Muslim countries, but they are um, they 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 aren't allowed to hold certain rungs of power because what they do is hand everything over to Zionists and Satanists because they're totally corrupt. That's just what they do. You can see that. That's what they do. And it's a good... Th they're allowed to practice... We can't force your religion on them. But they're allowed to practice their religion, but they're only allowed to practice that religion because they are in the outdated forms of Islam. They practice the outdated forms of Islam. That's the only reason. Because, they're, because like, you know, 50% of what they believe is okay. It's, it's pagans that we do not allow to exist in our country. Either they con convert or they're killed. And I mean, I think maybe that's a bit extreme. And that's a bit Middle Ages, a bit medieval. Maybe they can convert or go to prison. <laughs> convert or go to prison or just leave. But paganism is Satanism. You have to know that. The belief that God is not God is Satanism. That these other that there are other gods equal to or superior to the creator, that is Satanism. And pagans will, you know, they'll reject that all they want. I've gotten to this argument so much. It's the truth. If you, a, a pagan is a Satanist, they don't know that knowingly. That's the whole point is that Satan is a trickster and he manipulates and he gets you to sign your soul away without you knowing it thinking that you're superior and that you're God and all this crap. So yeah, I mean, that's who runs the world are these evil pagans. So yeah, Islam is the best. Islam is the only, it's, it's just, it works. That's the only way to ask. And we'll go into that more because I know I'm not trying to convert people here. I'm just, it's just, it is what it is. Islam is the answer to everything. And We'll go into, you know, the preconceived uh, notions and stigmas and stereotypes, negative stereotypes and Islamophobic uh, beliefs about Islam. That's, that's a whole other transmission. So at almost two hours, this is a perfect time to sign off. Thank you for listening and please like and subscribe. Hopefully I'll have more for you. Peace.